Okay, so the first one is from Reddit user Trade Feeds. And his question is, how long does it take to train a dev to develop on Cardano? Once someone is trained, who hires them, if anyone? So the first question there was, how long does it take to train a dev to develop on Cardano? I'll try and answer it as best I can, but there's, there's various different development areas within Cardano. So one, one question back from me is, are you talking just a Haskell developer, are you talking a Scala developer, or someone who knows Rust, a JavaScript developer who's developing on the Deadless wallet, which is still tied into Cardano? Um, it depends on their background. Is it a graduate that's coming in, or is it someone that's cross training? Maybe they've got some functional programming experience and they're moving across that they may pick it up a little bit, a little bit quicker. And again, once someone is, is trained who hires them, if anybody will, I'd have to understand a little bit more what they mean from that, that point of view. If, if you talk about some training programs that maybe the IHK are, are running. So you would have a dialogue with the manager who needs that person and say, okay, yeah, they meet the requirements to, you know, 80% of the requirements. So that's a good start maybe. Yeah, it, it does come down to it. It depends on the size of the team. If you've got a, a decent team size and you can, for want of a better term, you can absorb someone coming to the team where you can give them a bit of time and dedication to help them. That's that's going to make the biggest difference. As we mentioned earlier, no point hiring a grind but sitting someone in a corner going, there you go. It doesn't add any value. It doesn't, it doesn't help at all. So, it depends really on on the individual at the time point. If someone's coming, if someone's trying to come from a, a an object oriented background, say the new C sharp or something, and then they go, I'm just going to go on and Haskell. Can you give me a job? There's there's obviously a bigger learning curve there, a whole mentality shift to to understand functional programming language. But they may have other skills in there, and naturally they you want to have part of the team. So it comes down to the individual. So I've answered it, but I don't think I've answered it. Oh, I, th I think you've answered it because a lot of the questions that we see here and on, on the forums is people are asking, you know, what do you need to learn? So the questions people have is not how do you recruit me, but how do I understand Haskell so I can go do that kind of work? I think th that's why we see a lot of that. And you being a technical recruiter, you're the closest guy we got to being able to answer that. So anything would be helpful. I, I also have a follow-up question to that. How daunting is it uh, for a new developer to come on the team? I know the project's open source. Is it is it constant communication with the manager in that part in that particular department to catch them up to speed, or is it are there manuals being written and it's like here's your manual, let's let um, catch up. And is it does it become harder and harder as the project progresses to get people on because they're so far back that they have so much material to catch up on? Yeah, it's an interesting question. And I suppose if you're looking at someone, and you're right, it's great. If you set a project team and we've got nothing in flight that time, you can bring the team together and you can discuss what the project's about and everybody gets off on the right foot and, and they start developing. But when a project's in flight and you're bringing bringing someone else into it, it, it does have its own problems, but you have to make sure they're done right. And it's interesting you mentioned on there. I mean, we do have an onboarding process of call. Of course, we do have a, a lot of close interaction because while we're, we're remote, we mentioned earlier, with the functions being grouped in relative time zones, we use Google Hangouts and Slack for, for strong communication. So we, there's naturally daily stand-ups and meetings that go on. There's a lot of documentation available across the business as well, of course, but you have to do it right. There's no point hiring someone as good as they are. If they come in and you just go, right, off you go in the corner and they don't talk to anybody. For one, it's not going to add any value to the project, but it's not going to add any value or help that individual coming on either. So the whole exercise becomes pointless. So when we bring someone into a project, yes, there's going to be a steep enough learning curve. As you mentioned, if the project's in flight and there's a lot of documentation there, we can provide them all the documentation. It's just going to take a little something in, in, in themselves to obviously be able to go through the documentation. We also have them time to do that as well. You can't give them all the documentation, but have a read of have a read of those couple hundred pages, and we'll catch up tomorrow about it. Because they're not going to get through and absorb it, but also they're going to need to read the documentation, and then probably talk to someone about it as well. It was in the project. There may be areas just want a bit of clarification on a field to feel comfortable with. So you have to take that on board when you when you're hiring new people to come on and make sure the onboarding process is done done properly and correct.